And I think about that, how that's how I have lived the majority of my life. See, I either would say one thing and feel another. I would either say one thing or do another. I had the privilege of um, being in a leadership conference, which was a very small and intimate one, with Bishop Jakes this last January. And he introduced um, this, this new kind of theory called systems under test. And I was there for 48 hours. It was kind of around-the-clock training, and it, it enlightened me, you know, throughout my, my entire life, my business life, my church life, my family life. And I came back from that conference, and I met with our leadership team right away because, I mean, I'd rather be ready for a new opportunity than get ready after the opportunity has come and gone. And as Bishop would began to talk about this systems under test, it made me evaluate my own living systems, my own psychological systems, my own emotional systems, my own speaking systems, my own understanding systems on how I process what I see, what I hear, what I feel. And I came to the realization that for the longest time and for the rest of my life, my life systems being my thinking, my speaking and my understanding will be continuously under test. Lord, I feel you here tonight. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit come in this place in such an undeniable way that we will most definitely leave differently than they came. Lord, I ask that you remove this complacency, this preoccupation. Lord, these systems need to be dismantled that we built in our own lives with our thinking since childhood, thinking we have to do this all by ourselves, thinking that we're in this all alone, thinking that our mess will never turn into a message. Lord, thinking that our test will never be a testimony. Lord, thinking that you're mad at us. Lord, thinking that you don't have a plan for us. Lord, I ask that you tonight in the name of Jesus begin to dismantle these systems Lord we need an overhaul Lord you are taking us to higher heights and deeper depths in you Lord I pray upon the people that have worked in and out of these systems of rebuilding their lives just to get the same thing happening over and over again the people that don't believe that he came that we may not only have a life but have it to the full that we may enjoy it to the overflow Lord that we may be a blessing on your behalf to other people, Lord, that we may be givers rather than takers. Lord, that we believe that you really did come, that you really do have a plan, and it's not just for the other guy, that it is for us. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you begin from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, dismantle our individual systems that we think work, that do not work. Tonight, we will leave with a new system Your system, which will never change. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And I've watched myself and I've watched other people for many, many years. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But when Bishop was talking about this SUT, set systems under test, it's referenced in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Man, the Holy Spirit's here. I'm blurry. I can't even see straight. I don't think I need bifocals. I just came from the eye doctor. But it talks about this. And, and I really want to, this will be the, the, really the foundation over the next four weeks. And I, I really want to encourage you to invite your friends because I believe every human being, even if they're not a believer, can benefit from what, anything that God says. But especially when it talks about it, it says, When I was a child, when I was a child, the word when is referencing the past tense. I had to ask myself, am I emotionally, spiritually, and mentally as mature as my age? It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I came a man, now women, that includes you. We're not talking about gender here. The Bible says, you know, no gender here. I mean, God is talking to us here. It says, but as a child, let's talk about those two words. They're very, very small words. But as a child, have you ever heard that you're thinking as a child? 
at 35? Do you take your ball and go home on a daily basis? <laughs> it says that, that I, you know, no, 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 out of all seriousness, some of us had some, they, you know, psychologists say that, it, you know, in your first five years, more or less, your life is formed. You're thinking, you're understanding, you're speaking in different things. It says, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, so when I became means it's a process. I put away childish things. See, you, if you're still holding, if, I, if I'm still holding on to this when I'm trying to put it away, it's not away because I'm still holding on to it. What are you still holding on to? That is affecting the way you speak, the way you understand, and the way you think. But it says, put away childish things. So over the next three weeks, I'll talk about our level of understanding, why some of us get offended so easily. Why so, I mean, the, the, the level of our, our thinking, the Bible says that you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you're going to be able to test and approve what God's perfect will is for your life. But if I'm still thinking like a child, and, you know, I, I was, I, I mean, you know, I, I used to think I was so good I could run and own companies, but I still thought like a child. See, I was good at think, letting you know I was good, but I really wasn't good because what I was saying and what I was feeling were two different things. See, I, I, I was, I, 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 in my own mind, I thought as, as long as you thought I was okay, I was okay. And I learned the worldly systems of looking good and sounding good, but I didn't feel good. And my systems needed to be dismantled, and, and I want to talk to you about that this evening, because it says now in 2 Corinthians 5.17, why are we operating in our old ways? It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, I believe a lot of us have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and he says, the old is gone, and behold, the new is here. Behold, says, behold, says, behold, I'm excited. The old is put behind me. Behold, the new is here. But we accept Jesus and we're still operating in our old systems. Have we really accepted Jesus? Are we just saying we accepted Jesus? Are we saying that we accepted Jesus but still feeling the same? See, if Jesus is in your heart... You shouldn't feel the same. And what it says, therefore, if anyone, this is, I don't care how screwed up you were. Trust me, I was screwed up. I'm still screwed up. <laughs> but it says, who, if anyone, that means it don't matter where you come from. It don't matter what you did. If anyone is in Christ, he, which is not gender specific, is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Are you still trying to work around things that should have been long gone? It says, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold. Say, behold. behold. Say it louder. Behold. Say it like it really means something. Behold. See, behold. The old things have passed away. Hallelujah. Behold. Behold, I can let go. Bishop taught me, a lot of us, this is how we operate with Jesus, with God. And we say, take it, God. Take it, God. And we got our hands closed. He, can't, he ain't going to pry your fingers open. You got to let it go. You got to let them have it. And it says, old things have passed away, all things. So, see, some of us are still operating in systems where some of the new, I'll, I'll, I'll apply God's system to this, but I'm going to keep my old system for that. The Bible doesn't say some things have become new. It says with Jesus, all things have become new. So I want to talk about the word systems for a second. In Hebrews 8, 5, it says, systems of God will never change. See, I serve the great I am. But some of us are serving a system where I was or I'm going to be. And we serve the system as if we'll be happy when or if we get something that will think that will make us happy. But I fail to recognize in my old system that why not be happy now? Because God came that I may have, enjoy a life to the full till it overflows. See, I don't, I don't serve in a system today that my circumstances speak to me. I serve in a system today that I speak 
not about my circumstances. I serve in a system because Mark 11 says, I speak to my circumstances and I tell my circumstances about my God. But it says they serve in a system, say system, system, of worship that is only a copy of a shadow of the real one in heaven. What system are you copying? When I was a child, I spoke, I understood, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. They serve in. That means you've got to be part of something. In a system of worship that is only a copy, a shadow of the real one heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build, I told you in April that God is getting ready to build something here. Will you be a part of that? Or will we do what we've always done and fade away? It says they serve and ready to build the tabernacle. God gave him this warning. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern. Bishop taught on patterns of God. The patterns of God never change. They never change. So it says, according to the pattern have shown you here on the mountain. See, we've got to understand that we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. I don't need to adapt to the 20th century. This will never change. See, see, i got to understand that when, I, when, when God puts it on my heart to say he's ready to build something here, I ask you the question, are you in or out? Are you only in when you feel like being in? That's the old system. And what it says here in Galatians 2.18, systems of old that don't work. See, I was the type of guy, rather I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system. Aren't you tired of rebuilding your whole life, people rebuild, lose, rebuild, lose, rebuild, lose, rebuild. With God, you never lose. Let me tell you something about the difference between building and rebuilding. I don't want to be a part of rebuilding. See, and, and, and now what it says is, I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of the law that was already torn down. Let me ask you a question. Has God ever torn down your system? And after he tore it down, did you try to rebuild the same system? He wiped it clean. He says, no, you're operating in your system. So he tore it down. And, and I, I often talk to Bishop about our leadership, and he says, it's like working with raw material. You'd rather work with raw material. See, when you, when you, when you renovate or you refurbish or you refinish something, you have to use products to get all the garbage out, to get it down to its original condition. Has God ever tore you down? See, it says if you rebuild something that was already tore down, you're going back to the same system. It says in Hebrews 10.1, system is not working because you're not cleansed. Check this out. This is where I believe the majority of people that go to church fall. This was me for many, many years. It says, the old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview. See, how I used to live my life, I just couldn't see. And I wanted out of my system, but behind this little shield was my comfort zone. And I never wanted, so, so God would tear it down and I'd come back to my comfort zone. But check out what the Word of God is saying here. It says the old system under the law of Moses is only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things. See, see, check it out. This is the difference between what God has for us because of Jesus Christ. A dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. Aren't you tired of hearing that you can have peace? but don't? I don't want to go to church and just hear about the things I could have. I want to experience the good things themselves. But check this out. This is how I lived my life for many, many years. It says the sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again. Well, I, I, I'm doing good. Like the guy said in the video, I come to church out of guilt. You get her off my back. To get them off my back. But it says, the sacrifice. See, I used to do all the church stuff. 
but I still didn't feel right. I believe what the pastor said, that you can have peace that transcends all understanding if you do not worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition and thanksgiving, you present your request to God. And the Bible says that the peace that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in who? Christ Jesus. Well, yeah, I believe it, but I ain't got it. Pastor tells me I can have it every week, but I walk out of this church the same way I walked in. Don't you want to just get something instead of hear about it? See, the old systems, it says, the sacrifices they made again and again. I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. But check it out. Here's the reason why. Because they were never able to provide perfect cleansing. you got to get a cleansing with Jesus. So many Christians are walking around letting their past dictate their future. So many people are walking around in guilt and combination, condemnation. And I want to talk to you about the word under. Say under. under. It says, through him in Acts 13, 39, under condemnation, not freedom. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. See, in my old system, my past dictated my future. Even though I came to church, I still felt guilty. I still felt condemned. I still felt unworthy. I still felt unforgiveness. I felt that everybody was judging me and everybody was criticizing. Under my own system, I, I, my old system, I thought more of what you thought of me than what God thought of me. It says, through him, everyone who believes is set free. It says now in Matthew 8, 9, under your own authority, not God's authority. See, your old system is you're going to call your own shots. I see this in the baby boomer generation. I see it in my generation. I don't even know how many. What do they call us? Gen X, baby boomers, twisted generation. (laughs) But I see it in every generation today. Who are you talking to? Yourself? You're getting, get, getting advice from yourself? See, we need to be under authority. I got under authority five years ago to this man sitting in the front row. It changed my life. Because when you're under another person's biblical authority, it takes a level of humility. And the Bible says, if you humble yourself, then God will exalt you. And let me tell you, since five years ago, when I had enough humility to know that God, as he says in Jeremiah 3.15, that I will give you shepherds after my own heart to lead you in God. Who's your shepherd? See, I love it when I have people around me that says, for myself, I am a man under authority. I can tell you that with 100% confidence. I'm a man under authority, under his authority. Under his authority. See, people that don't like to be under authority, you're always picking apart your bosses anyway at work. And if you're picking apart your bosses, you're picking apart God. Because read Romans 13.1. But it says, for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. See, you, and you're going to be a leader, you need to be a follower first. It says, with soldiers under me, I tell this one go and he goes, and that one come and he goes. Well, I love what Sarah said to me last week. We were talking about doing a ministry. Well, why don't you, why would I have to pray about giving food to the homeless? Well, can you increase your tithe a little bit? Well, let me pray about it. Why? You want to go to feed my starving children and watch the Vikings game? Well, let me pray about it. (laughs) That's hogwash. That's an old system. That's an old system. And what it says, I mean, you've got to be a person that's under authority. Come and he comes. See, I don't need people to hesitate around me. When I'm a warrior for God and I'm in combat on a daily basis, I don't want the brother or sister next to me fighting with me against the devil saying, well, let me pray about it. No, we ain't got time to pray about it. Let's do this. But I ask you the question, check it out, Acts 24, 2. Under chaos and confusion are not direction. When Paul was called in, presented his case before Felix, we have enjoyed a long period of peace under you. I've enjoyed a long period of peace under you. We have a recovery program for the last 11 years. I see people and I hear them, they get 
under, from underneath the umbrella and, and they, they were doing great when they're there but then they go do their own thing they're under their own authority and it's like man I wish I had that peace back because it takes a level of humility and what it says here is so true it's, and, and it says and your foresight has brought about reform. your foresight bishop has brought about reforms in my marriage in our church in my businesses in my being a father, in my friend, your, your, your foresight. See, I, I want to be around people of force, not foresight, not hindsight. That's their, oh, should have listened. <laughs> he was right. I'm tired of living in hindsight. See, what it says here, it's so true. And it says in Luke 7, 4, under low self-worth, not your, own, your worth in him. It says, so Jesus went with him and he was not far from the house. See, in your old system, you'll always almost get there. Your whole life will consist of almost getting there. In your own system. It says, no, no, check this out. I love, I love stuff. I was saying to my wife, man, there'll come a day that I can study 24 so I, I used to hate studying. But behold, the old is gone and the new has come. I love studying now. Check this out, check this out. I mean, it says, not far from the house when the centurion, I don't even know if I said that right, sent friend. See, why do you have to have people call people for you? That's how I grew up. Mom, can you call them and tell them I'm not coming? But that's what's going on here. He sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble your... Let me tell you something about God. God isn't troubled with your troubles. Your troubles do not trouble God. For I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. Romans 6, 14 through 15. Under sin, not his grace. For sin is no longer your master. What is your taskmaster? Your anxiety, your fear, your gossip, your criticism, unforgiveness. Those used to be all my masters. Addiction used to be my master. Because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? The Bible says by no means. Stop doing things just because you know you can apologize. Stop sinning just because you know he'll forgive you. See, that's the old system. It says in Romans 16, 20, under trials, not as peace. For the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. But under, under our system, we're getting crushed on a daily basis. Under God's system, you know, he, he, he provides you. He says that I'm going to crush Satan under your feet. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. 1 Corinthians 9, 7, under indecision, not commitment. Check this out. Each one of you should give what is decided in your heart to give. Tonight I said there's a pledge card and God put something on your heart. But you didn't do it. I'll say it again. What would your life look like today if you would have done everything that God put on your heart to do? Amen. Your old system says you can't. Your new system says I can do all, not some things. Can we get a new building? I have no idea. We're a young church. Ties are not very, you know, they're not very big with our body. But you know what? I can do it through him who gives me strength. And then you say, I can do it through him who gives me strength. And another person says, I can do it through him who gives me strength. And pretty soon we got 62 people saying, I can do it through him who gives me strength. Pretty soon 130 people, pretty soon 3,000 people. Will you be one of them? Good friend of mine's in the front row. He's just as nuts as I am. But he knows what's up and he's a man of humility. He's amazed of what God is doing. Amazed. And he just, it's just, just, but it says each one of you should give what you decide in your, not reluctantly or under compulsion. See, don't say you're going to do something and you're not going to do it. Do you understand how the devil works? I, I learned this about the devil a long time ago. When I was trying, getting sober and going to meetings, you know, I was tired because I was working. I'm tired. <laughs> I wanted Monica to throw me a party because I worked eight hours in one day. <laughs> I need some me time. But I learned one thing about the devil. See, 
I used to listen to them. Oh, you don't need to go. You don't need to study. But the devil, after you listen to him, then he circles back and says, you fool for not studying. I can't believe that you're such a loser. I can't believe you didn't go to church. I can't believe you didn't. See, you got to understand the devil. Why? The only thought, and Bishop talks about this too. The only time when the devil plants a thought in your head is yours is when you agree with it. You don't want to know about the thoughts in my head. But I don't agree with them. See, I'm under a new system. And it says in Luke 8, 16, under darkness or not light. It says no one who lights a lamp and hides it is a clay jar or puts it under. See, there is so much hidden talent in this room. Instead, instead, they put it on a stand, the Bible says. But I want to talk to you real quickly about being tested. Genesis 22, 1 says, tested to be where God has planted you. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. Let me ask you a question. Are you looking for God or is God looking for you? God knows where to find me because I'm where he planted me. I'm rooted. And it says in Exodus 16, 4, tested to see if you follow instructions. It says, enough for that day. In the way I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions. Isaiah 48, 10, tested by affliction to be refined. It says, see, I have refined you through not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. So not if affliction will happen in your life. When affliction happens in your life, do you go back to your old system? What system do you operate? Let me tell you something. When, you, when God puts something on your heart to do and you decide to do it and you say what you're going to do, you will be tested on what you said you were going to do. Because God tested Abraham and what it says, it says now in Hebrews 3.8, tested when God seems distant. Do not harden your hearts as they didn't. See, when you operate in your own thinking, your own understanding, and your own speaking, your heart gets hardened. Is it as they did in their rebellion during their time of testing in the wilderness? Psalm 26, 2 and 3, tested by the examination of your heart and mind. Test me, Lord, the Bible says. Try me, examine my heart and my mind. For I have always been mindful of your unfailing love, but maybe as of late I started to operate in my old system and I'm not mindful of his unfailing love. Have you ever asked God to test you and try you and examine your heart and mind? It says in James 1, 2 through 4, faith tested is faith that can be trusted. Can your faith be trusted? Are you operating in the right system? Are you doing what you've always done and expecting something differently than you always got? It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. See, when you're operating in the system of God and the pattern of God, you don't run, you don't quit. You face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It says, let perseverance. See, some of us aren't letting God do what he wants to do in your life. We're playing God. We're operating in our old systems. We're thinking the same. We're speaking the same. We're understanding the same. And the way you understand affects the way you speak. The way you understand affects the way you think. And the way you think affects the way you feel. And the Bible says the power of life and death is in your mouth. What's coming out of your mouth? And it, words are thoughts too. It doesn't have to have vocals to be a word. What are you thinking? What are you asking? See, I mean, it says, but see, the, the new system produces. Let per- perseverance finish its work. So many of us do not let God finish his work. So you may be mature and complete. So I ask you, where are you at tonight? In Ecclesiastes 3, one it says, are you waiting to get it together to go all in? So many people say, I'll go to church when I get it together. They fail to recognize going to church is what gets you together. I'll give when I get it together. It's your giving that will get you together. I gave my way out of poverty. I gave my way as an owner of houses. I gave my way. I gave my 10% when I had to buy two two hot dogs for 99 cents and ask Dewey for gas money to go to church. 
I gave my way out of depression. I gave my way out of anxiety. I gave my way out of the bottom of the corporate totem pole. I gave my way out of depression. I, I, I'm telling you, are you going to... See, the Bible says, give and you will be given. If I want something from her, I give her something first. Not out of manipulation. Out of obedience. I follow his system. And God is not an eager saint, but I ask you, where are you at tonight? Because in Ecclesiastes, Bishop teaches on this all the time. Are you waiting to get it together to go all in? I'll give when I get my promotion. I'll give when I have more money. I'll give when I quit smoking. I'll give when I don't want to drink caribou. I'll give when I don't need to supersize it. I'll give when my wife stops spending money. I'll give when... I'll come to church when it's cloudy. I'll come to church when it's raining. I ain't come to church when it's... You know, I'll give once a month. I'm not going to say I'm going to give when I'm not here. I, don't, I can't predict tomorrow. I don't even know if I'll be here. Well, maybe you will if you start committing to something. Let me tell you something about commitment. You'll never be committed until you're submitted first. I didn't know what commitment was. I was married. And I didn't know what commitment was until I submitted to this man. And I was committed to her. Because I submitted to him, I was committed to you. Because I submitted to him and to God, of course. I'm staying where I'm planted. The Bible says that there is a time and a season for everything. Every activity under, say under. The time is now. One thing you cannot get back is time. I'm not going to miss it again. In Psalm 119, 140, do you believe his promises are for you? It says your promises have been thoroughly tested. In God's system, it's a sure thing. But people don't believe it. They think their system is a sure thing, so they count on their own understanding and their own speaking and their own thinking. It says your servant loves him. I love God's, you know, God's promises have been tested in my life. Galatians 4, 1 through 3, and, and this is really what I want you to focus on. Are you living underneath your privileges? It says what I've been saying, as long as you are an heir, that you're underage, he is no different. See, I actually got a will now. That's, I mean, God is real. Everything I used to own used to be in a plastic bag 11 years ago. But Tommy and Megan couldn't get it, their inheritance, and I'm not saying there is much of one, until they were of age. Aren't you tired of just hearing about what you can have? It says, what I'm saying, as long as an heir is underage, is no different from a slave. Although all he owns, he owns the whole estate. This is everything. Everything you have is out here. But I want to stay behind my system because I believe that it works. The whole estate is yours. But you're still underage. You're still not in. You're still operating your own understanding. You're still not under authority. You're still not doing what God has called you to do. But so God's got to sit back and hold what he has for you until you mature into what he has created you to be. I'm not going to miss it anymore, God. I'm not going to miss it. It says the heir who is underage is subject to guardians You are under people you should be over. You are working for companies that you should own. We are in buildings and serving committees that we should be overseeing. I'm not underage anymore. It's time when I was a child. See, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees. The time is... So also, when they're underage, we are in slavery under the elementary... Force, force, spiritual force. See, you're a slave to your system. So tonight I ask you, what grade will you get on this test? The Bible says, test yourselves to make sure you're solid in the faith. 
Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. Where are you tonight? What system are you operating in? What thinking are you operating in? What understanding are you operating? How are you speaking? How is it affecting the way you think, feel, and what you love? It says you need firsthand evidence, not merely hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out, the Bible says. If you fail the test, do something about it. If you failed the test tonight, you're not a failure. You just failed the test. But tonight I have a question for some of you. In 2 Corinthians 3.14 it says, Ask Christ to help you break through the barrier. But it says, But their minds were made dull. For to this day the same veil remains, still operating in the same system. When the old covenant is read, it has not been removed, but because only Christ can take it away. What system are you operating in? I'm not going to live my life anymore almost getting what God has for me. The veil that only Christ can take away. Oh, I want out. I want to do it God's way. I can do it. I'll go in for a week, but then I come back to my old ways. Their minds were dull. I'm dull. From this day, the same veil remains as the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ it is taken away. My life is dull. My thinking is dull. My understanding is dull. My future is dull because my whole life I've operated in a worldly system and I didn't know any better. Somebody taught me this system and God didn't teach me it. And I want out. I want out of my old ways. I can't figure out how to get out. I want out of this system. Only Jesus can do it. Tonight, the light is shining on you like it's shining on me. And even though you might be still operating in your old system, the light of God is so powerful that you can see it through this this dimness that you have been living in. Who are you? Who is living underneath their privileges that needs to break through this veil? Who needs to accept Jesus? One of you will come and I guarantee you several other will walk up here. You need a new system. Who are you? Come, come up here, please. I'm telling you, you're here. You might have even accepted Jesus. Before. I'm not going to leave this because this is about your soul. This is about eternity. God has called you to break through this veil and start operating in a new system. Who are you? Who else? Who else? Who else? You're here. You're here. And maybe you've accepted Christ before. Maybe you've accepted Christ, but you're still operating in your old system. I don't know that you truly have. Keep coming. Keep coming. And I want you to come up and follow me. It's time for you to walk through. Who else? There's more of you. I want you to please come up on stage. There's more. You don't leave here the same way you came, operating in the same system. If you profess to have Jesus Christ in your heart and you're still living the same, there is something wrong. Bishop, if somebody would get Bishop the microphone too, we're going to do the... The sinner's prayer here, but it's time for us to walk through. It's time to walk through into a new system. Tom, why don't you lead the way and break the way? Now you guys follow him. Heaven is rejoicing.
And this door is still open. Who else needs to come up here? Get rid of this stuff. Bishop's going to lead you in a prayer. I mean, you know, it's always the blessing. The Bible teaches us that there's joy in the presence of the angel. Amen. That's not the angel. That's the joy in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Over one sinner that repents. And each and every one of us have sinned. But how I many you know we're no longer sinners? Amen. And so what we have to realize is that God wants to cleanse us. The Bible teaches us if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And oftentimes we, we may think that we're not doing anything that bad, but if, it, if God calls it a sin, how many know that's what it is? Amen? And so what we have to realize, God wants us not only to confess sin, but he said confess your faults. So when you look at that in James 5, 16, it says confess your fault. And that in the Greek is the word Asian, A-I-T-I-O-N. And it says that in, in the the definition for it is that that is causative of and that's, that's responsible for the act of sin. So God says we can deal with this on the thought level. I mean, you know, it's better to, to nip it before you do it than to do it afterwards. Amen? So we want to be able to allow God each and every time that we begin to think these things, if we don't cast them down like Pastor was saying, the thought only becomes your thought when you agree with it. Anybody get any bad thoughts in here? Let me see if anybody got any bad thoughts this week. Let me see. I, no, I got to see. I got to see. See, I want to see those that keep their hands down. Because when you keep your hand down, we're going to come and lay hands on you. Amen. So I want you guys to just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, today, I'm decreeing. I'm declaring victory in every area of my life, I refuse to live beneath the privileges God has afforded me. I know I'm a new creature, and not just some, but all things, all things have passed away, and all things have become new. I thank you, Lord that from this day forward I'll reveal only the newness you have given to me that I am that new creature I decree it I declare it and each and every one that's here I believe are in agreement with me and my power and my faith is stronger mixing their faith with mine I'm an overcomer in Jesus name amen come on give God some praise come on come on come on come on come on yes 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 Go ahead, God. amen and the rest of you have something underneath hanging next to your heart and in closing in Matthew 5 14 it says SVCC is a city on a hill it's time for our light to shine it says you are the light of the world a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand gives light to the whole house tonight I want you to take this from under, off your head you're no longer bound to your old system. And I want you to break it. And I want you to watch the light of Christ begin. Begin to fill up this house. It's time to break your old system. See, I'm not going to be bound to my old system anymore. It says, put it on a stand and lights in the house. In the same way, light your, let your light shine before others so that you may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Tonight as we close with this song, I'm going to ask you to lift your lights high. Lift your lights high. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. 
We are a city on a hill that God is going to give a new home. But you can't do it unless you break every chain that is holding you in darkness. Please come forward and join your new family of believers. It's time to break every chain that will hold you back. There is power in the name of Jesus. Please come forward. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. You don't want to leave now. You don't want to leave now. Army, raise your hands in the air. If you're part of the army, raise your hands in the air. If you're part of the army, raise your hands in the air. Before we pray, we just want to remind you that God has given you this light. He has planted that inside of you. And these sticks are representative of that. But it's up to us to keep that light shining. And it's up to us to continue to walk in that narrow path. It's up to us to make sure that our thought life aligns with what God wants us to be thinking of. We have to think about what we're thinking about. We have to be conscious of every move we make. We have to love one another as God loves us. We have to keep this light shining so we can be that light for all of those who need to see it. And it's up to us to make sure that happens. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your powerful, powerful presence here tonight. We thank you that your Holy Spirit showed up like never before, Lord. We just thank you for each and every person that received Christ into their hearts today. We know the angels are rejoicing in heaven. And Lord, we thank you for this message that you delivered to us. We thank you for opening up our eyes, Lord, to things that maybe we weren't paying attention to. We just ask that you penetrate our hearts, that you touch us in places that we were not able to let you touch before, Father God. We just ask for open hearts and open minds and just a softening of our hearts so that we can finally, maybe for the first time ever, receive that love that you have for us so that we can change our systems, so that we can walk into the system that you have for us, so that we don't have to carry that old way of thinking, that we will believe that the old is come and the new, the old is gone and the new has come that you have tossed our sins into the sea of forgetfulness, that they are as far away from each other as the east is to the west. Lord, we thank you so much for that forgiveness and for that never-failing love. We thank you that you never leave us, that you never forsake us, Lord. And most of all, we just thank you for putting us here in this church family, Lord, where we are able to feel the love that you have for us through one another. Lord, as we leave today, Lord, I just pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice that we will be able to take away what we learned tonight and just apply it to our daily lives for the rest of this week until we are able to meet again. Lord, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, Lord, for putting me here. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that you sent here today, and I thank you that we are all leaving differently than when we walk through the doors today. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We love you guys. See you downstairs.